In this presentation, we're going to look at descriptive statistics and how they sort of interact with probability distributions. This is very introductory stuff for R, and really this is aimed at students who are taking numerical computing courses related to finance and actuarial studies and stuff like that. I'm using a Jupyter notebook, so what I have to do is to prepare my notebook just to make things easier to work with uh, later on. So what I'm going to do here is first off install the Magritor R package. Okay, so I can use the pipe operator. I'll show it there shortly. It's actually at the bottom of the screen right now. And also what I'm going to do here is sort of check the digits. Now this is sort of become, will become clear shortly. Okay, what I do to run a cell with a bit of code in it is just press run. Okay, and so it should run the code. So the first exercise is the following data represents the total average number of marks obtained for a particular exam observed over seven exam sessions that have been administered by a professional exam body. So 87, 53, 72, 90, 78, 85, and 83. So what we're going to do here is enter these data into R and compute their mean and variance, the sample mean and sample variance. Here's the seven numbers. Okay, and you notice I have them in brackets. Okay, and before this bracket, I, these brackets, I have this command C. That's the concatenate command, which really just sort of says, we're going to combine this into a single object, in this case, a numeric object, and we're going to give it the name Y. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. Uh, it just creates, creates, it, creates it as a object. So let's have a look at Y, actually. Let's just sort of run that cell now. That's why there, it's just the numbers all stored in as a single object. So what we can do now is calculate the mean of Y and I'll show you why I'm using the pipe operator and so on. Because when I try to compute the mean of Y, I get this number 78.2857. So it's just way too many decimal places. So essentially the rounding here does not work properly. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to import the pipe operator, which just adjusts it to rounds it to three decimal places. Perfect. Um, so here we can combine both the mean and the variance into a single sort of object. Okay. Uh, mean 78.286 and variance 159.905. Uh, let's sort of keep that in mind for later on. Okay. So if you're not familiar with the Poisson distribution later on, just sort of keep that in mind. 78.26 and 159.905. Uh, just as a quick remark, we can also find standard deviation there, which will be 12.645. Let's round that to three decimal places. Yeah, there we go. Now, so, the exercise, the second exercise is investigate whether the Poisson distribution is appropriate for these data by calculating the sample mean and the sample variance of 10 Poisson samples having the same sample size and mean as the sample given above. Okay, now this is something I'll just sort of drop into conversation now. It's probably a little bit early to sort of state it. Before the Poisson distribution, which is parameterized with the Poisson mean lambda, uh, the expected value of x should equal the variance of x. So that means they should both equal lambda, some value lambda. Okay, that's something to keep in mind later on. Now, so 10 Poisson samples that have the same size, which is 7, and the same mean, which is 78.29, or thereabouts, I'll use 78.29 as above. So I have to create 10 of those samples. So what I'm going to do here is sort of set up two little objects called x bar and s2, or s squared and just to store the output. So we have to do that, so just to sort of put our output somewhere so we can store them and look at them later on. So what I can do here is, in one fell soup, essentially I can break this up into two. For example, run x bar equals numeric 10 and s2 equals numeric 10, but I can just actually run them in one go like that. So that, when I call them to have a look at them, x bar, it's just a bunch of zeros, 10 zeros, and s2 is a bunch of zeros, okay? so. What we're going to do now is go to RPOS, which have a look at RPOS. This is random number generation. So random, it randomly generates realizations from the Poisson distribution with a specified lambda, which is the rate parameter, or parameter, the Poisson mean, 
Here we're told to uh, generate a 7. Again, because that's what we're to told to try and replicate from above. X equals R plus 7. Lambda equals 78.29. So let's just have a look at that. See how that runs. Okay. So that's our that's a sample there. A random sample. There's another one. And we can run a third one there. I can just keep going. Oh, I missed it. Doesn't matter. Okay. So... Here we have our for loop. So essentially what we have to do is create 10 of these samples and get the mean and the variance of these uh, samples. Now what I mean, I'll, I'll go through this in way more detail actually. I just sort of went through the start of it. So the for loop has 10 phases, 10 iterations. So there's an index for each iteration and here the index is called J. So J equal one, J equals one will correspond to the first iteration, J equals two, will correspond to the second iteration. So it iterates the following piece of code 10 times. So it creates my sample X, just like we've done there a few times above, R plus 7, 78.29, okay? Now, it assigns the mean of X into X bar J. So this replaces for each phase, first phase, second phase, third phase, let's say the first phase, it replaces each cell, the, the corresponding cell with the mean. So the mean becomes the zero that we had previously now is assigned the mean for that particular iteration. Okay. And likewise for S2. Okay. So for J equal one in the first iteration, the first zero will get replaced by the mean and the first uh, zero will get replaced by the variance. So let's look at our outputs. So this is the variance, first off. So those are the variances of the 10 samples. And, and they're combined into a single object. And also, the means from the 10 samples are 80.429, 73.857, and so on. Okay. You'll notice there that they're all fairly close to 78.29, whereas the variances are a bit more spread out, but that's going to happen. Okay. So what we could do here is actually just have a quick look at the mean and the variances, uh, the means and the variances and get the mean of that sample. Okay. It's a little bit confusing here. We just collected up a mean of means basically. So actually we have the median here. We can look at the median first. I can then just chop it out and just ch replace it with the mean. So the mean of that sample there above is 78 point, the median is 78.357. Okay, let's look at the mean of that. 78.259, that's fairly close to what we should expect, 78.29. In fact, it's very, very close. The variances, now the variances could be a bit more spread out. Remember this squaring takes place here. Let's put that DI back in. So 93.19, it's not, really really far away from 78.29 and let's just have a look at this 96 a little bit higher than expected okay but remember we're dealing with a, a, a very large sample now so earlier on we were talking about the the exam scores which was 7829 and the variance was 159. Essentially, the variance is too high for us to consider that the um, it, 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 it would be a realistic assumption for that distribution, the exam scores, to be, um, it'd be very, very unrealistic. Now, there is one variance here, which is very high, okay, 164. But mostly they're much lower than that. Okay, that's noticeably high. So that's not enough to go on here. So really, the variances, on average, the variances should be um, close to seventy-eight point two nine. Okay, the mean and the variance. Okay, so we're a little bit unsure so far. Essentially, what we're going to do basically is we'll rerun the whole thing again, just this time with a much larger sample size, because when you're dealing with 10 iterations, that's not a whole lot to go on. So essentially we have to sort of use more uh, iterations here, a thousand in this case, and that just makes it, makes us like, makes things much easier to work with. So essentially what I'm gonna do in this instance 
is I'm going to sort of set it up as numeric and I'm going to leave that empty. Basically, I don't actually have to specify anything in there, okay? I can leave it blank. It doesn't really have to be specified as 10 or 1000 or anything like that. So that's just something, you know, if you want to set up one of these containers to hold results in, you don't actually have to specify the dimensions in advance. You see, because when I run it there, x bar and s squared, nothing actually prints out. There's nothing here. It just sort of creates a space in memory for them, but they don't actually have to hold anything yet. Okay. So what I'm also going to do down here now, now we're in the home straight here, is I can change n. So essentially what I have here, 1 to n, the range of values, but I can pre-specify n elsewhere. Okay. So if I want to change from n from 1,000 to 10,000 or something like that, I just have to add in a zero rather than work it through. So essentially, I'll just run this again, okay? And let's bring up what x bar looks like. I'm going to get a whole lot of numbers here, okay? My, now that's just too many numbers, okay? But you might notice that they're all very close to 78, okay? Anyway, so what I can do here is get the mean of that 1,000. 78.246, that's very, very close. And what we can do here now also is get the variances. Sorry, that should be S2, shouldn't it? So 79.799. Okay, so in this case, you know, that, that does sort of confirm our suspicion, not our suspicion, that the mean and the variance should be equal to each other, okay? But with a thousand observations, we're pretty sure that the variance, this variance is too high for this distribution to be considered uh, to to be considered Poisson. Okay. One last thing we could do is actually just have a quick look at this. S two. How many of them are greater than one five nine? Okay. So this just brings all of them out if they're greater than one hundred fifty. Now there is a good few there. Okay. Out of a thousand, it's not totally far fetched, but how many is that? So, what we can do there is set that up as a logical. Okay. Actually, this is really cool. This is really good stuff to know, actually. Uh, the, the, essentially, what it's going to print out here is loads and loads of true or falses. Okay. Is it, it asks the question, is it greater than 159? Yes or no. So what we can do here is find the proportion using the command mean. So this makes our makes it a little bit easier to work with. About slightly higher than 5%, 0 0.054. Okay. So uh, that's it there. That's a little bit of numerical simulation related to the Poisson distribution. And yeah, that's it. We'll leave it there.